Hey everyone, <clears throat> today is Monday, the 19th of July, 2021. Uh, I just got back this morning from an excellent weekend of Star Wars cards, uh, an amazing weekend. It is great to be back in person after the pandemic, so amazing that we have a vaccine and can safely uh, travel and see each other once again. Um, so uh, right now I'm going to do a tournament report talking a little bit about uh, the decks I chose, the meta, um, and going through each of my games. Um, unfortunately, you know, since this was an in-person event, not online, I don't have a ton of visuals. I, I don't have like a jump replay to show you for a lot of the games. So most of it will just um, won't have a ton of visuals to look at, but uh, you can either, you know, put this on in the background of something while, and, and listen while you're at work or something like that um, and, and not worry too much about missing out. I will pull up some deck lists at some points, um, uh, but in general, we'll, it'll just be sort of me rambling, more like an audio tournament report, but I did want to just go ahead and stream it live because then um, rather than just do an audio report, because then people might pop into the chat, uh, the Twitch chat here on my channel and um, can ask any questions or... or uh, chime in with things if, if they were any of my opponents and remember particulars from the game or anything like that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Coming into this event, um, I'm going to start talking uh, a little bit about prep. Um, my team... Yeah, Batmouse, it was really good to see you too. Um, I love seeing that you travel to a major. I hope that hope you can make worlds. Um, and just, yeah, just a blast. Good, good event for sure. Um, so coming into the weekend, um, my team actually prepped more for this. I, I tested more for this event than I have in a whole long time. Um, my team was doing some like, we called it a poker night. We were doing like a weekly uh, group call on Discord and playing a few games and just chatting and it was a lot of fun. Um, and so we had been testing a whole bunch of different stuff and um, we put... Uh, one thing we picked up on when when watching Jimp was um, Desize, uh, Bring Him, and Old Allies decks, and so um, he he had uh, he had built these and, and played a couple games with them, um, and he was doing a lot of private testing too, and um, and so we looked at and made sort of our own version of some of them and it iterated on it a little bit. Um, so first of all, big props to him for, he is, I think, one of the um, more innovative deck designers in the game today. Um, you know, there there was a, I played Bring Him and Hayes played Bring Him. Um, and I know Desai and, and some of his, his teammates like Justin Miyashiro played it. So... Um, that was uh, big props to him for that. Uh, hang on, my computer just made a noise like there was a message. Uh, I gotta check that it's my mic is working or something. Oh, uh, Matt Carulli added me because there was a problem with the with the deck list page uh, with some stuff out of order, and it looks like he just fixed it. So thanks, Matt. Um, uh, I don't know what my stream is showing right now because I just switched. I started like a virtual desktop to, oh geez, what's going on, to stream this thing. And anyway, I don't know if that went weird, but anyway, Matt, thank you for fixing that. Um, and everything you do with making the community better and and all the online stuff, the website stuff. Um, so uh, I was saying, Desai create created some good decks. He created a, a good old allies. I think the um the one that Charlie Charlie's isn't. Um, isn't here uh, because he must have submitted it in sort of a weird format. They're going to work on uploading the rest of these over the course of this next week. Um, and Kevin's isn't here, but let me let me see Kessling's. I'm betting Charlie's was similar. Um, so this isn't quite the decide. Decides had only two battleground locations, and then it used Wisa's and and um, Boss Nass Chamber for activation, and so it sort of limited the number of Jaku locations. Um, a little bit different than a traditional build, but um, so he did that and um, sort of sort of pushed the envelope. Um, if we look at Sperling's list here, yeah, he that's what he has. He only has the two Jaku Battleground sites. Um, so th that was sort of a decide build. And um, 
we saw a lot of innovation uh, the 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 meta acceler accelerating really quickly in the week before the event in that because of this bring him deck people started playing um things like uh combined fleet action in their deck which is you know general leia suspends admiral's order so traditionally um Traditionally, old allies wouldn't play any Admiral's Orders, but because the Brigham was getting multiple destinies on the ground, it was really strong. We saw people adding in combined fleet action. So then, as a response, my team um, added in Grand Admiral Thrawn to suspend the Admiral's Order um, and some commands to pull him. So we saw the meta iterate really quickly the last, I would say, the last week before the event um, in that Desai created the bring him maybe two weeks before and then a bunch of people were testing it and then because of that people went oh people are on bring him so we need to add in combined fleet action to cap the destiny and then my team took that the next step further and went, we need to add in thrawn to suspend their combined fleet action to be able to draw our multiple destinies um so a big chunk of of this event of of making the top eight i think was um meta calls was was having your thumb correctly on the pulse of the meta and if you look charlie and dennis um and i'm sort of wandering a little bit here um before i get into my actual game descriptions and um so hopefully you all don't mind but just sort of um going through the thought process of of prepping for the event and um and and how the meta evolves and and hopefully give you guys some insights into that sort of thinking and and help you for prepping for a future major. Um, but if you look at uh, Charlie and Dennis, they both played map and, and they both finished seven and one um, and were uh, really phenomenal on day one. Um, and map was a great meta call. And, and it's a strong, strong deck. I think, I, I know I personally um, didn't think it was very strong post errata and I sort of wrote it off. I, I've played zero games with and against it um, since the errata, other than I, I did play Dennis um, playing map uh, in game one, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, but before that, I played zero games with and against it. I kind of dismissed it. And and I do think it is a viable deck, but it's especially strong against old allies. And so Charlie and Dennis went, we think the the field is going to have a lot of old allies. And more importantly, a lot of the top of the field is going to have old allies. So um, we want to we wanna be real strong against that. And, and they were right in that not only was Charlie playing it, but Kevin had old allies. Kessling had old allies, Hayes had old allies, Desai had old allies, Matt Sperling had old allies. So, um, and then Justin Miyashiro down down here. Um, so not only was there a fair amount of old allies in the field, a fair amount of the top 10, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of the top 10 light sides were old allies. So that makes MAP a great medical because MAP is just so strong against old allies. So um, when you are when you're working on um, making uh, choices for a major, um, sort of having your finger on the pulse of the meta is pretty important. Um, although one caveat I wanna add to that is I wouldn't play a stronger deck that you are less comfortable with and will play less well. Um, I think it's more important to play a deck a, a worse deck and play it well than play a better deck but not play it very well so if you are a player who who has sort of a comfort level with with some decks and then you decide this deck is the best deck in the meta i'm gonna play it but you don't play it very well that's not gonna help you as much as just like here's the deck i'm good with it's a solid deck it may not be the best one but it's still good and i'm gonna play it really well i think that takes precedence um, so I think there are some things, um, I'll, let me throw out another related example. Um, some things that, that players who aren't the very top players, um, do to try and improve their game that, uh, don't necessarily, they, they put their focus in the wrong place. And, and one example that I would say would, is tracking, um, tracking gets a lot of hype because it's like fancy and, and is really cool when you like force lightning their Jedi Luke and stuff, like you can do cool stuff with it. But I think, um, a lot of players would be more well served working on their decision making and lines of play instead of working on tracking. Tracking is a cool add-on skill, but 
if you're focusing a bunch on tracking and it's like, cool, you just made this sweet play where you like set for stunned their bail so you could shoot down their Tantiv and then you lost the game. It's like, okay, you did this cool tracking thing, but then you lost the game. Like you need to um, focus first on decision making and, and that sort of thing and then work on tracking later. Like, and, and so similar idea of, of the start with the fundamentals first and um, don't sacrifice that for the cooler, fancier stuff. Same thing in deck building. Um, so if you decide like, uh, you know, this is, this is the top deck in the meta, but you're not going to play it well, don't play it. Um, but anyways, if, if you can figure out what you think is good for the meta, you can, you, you know, add, add in some counter cards or some tweaks to the decks you're more comfortable with that sort of thing, or work on, on widening your range of decks you are comfortable with. But, um, but anyway, so, so map was a great meta call because of all that old allies. Um, the, like I said, Hayes and I, um, both added in that, uh, that general or the, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn virtual into our, um, bring him so that we could deal with the Admiral's order. Um, so things like that, uh, really is, is where we were the week before the event. Um, I didn't like light side at all coming into this event. Um, I think let the Wookiee win. Uh, I couldn't find a strong build of it. Um, I know Dennis went four and zero with his uh, let the Wookiee win mains deck, which is let's see. JNAP says I'm a hundred percent describing CRG with profit this weekend. Okay, so th yeah, that's that's probably a great example. So um, CRG played profit, uh, his peaceful profit, um, and I, I played against him day two. We'll we'll get to a description of that more a little bit later. But CRG played um, his profit. And it's probably not the best deck in the meta, like the tier one type, like this is amazing and a bunch of people should be playing this, but it's a strong deck and he's played it a lot. So he knows like, here are my outs. Here's what I need to be digging for. When I do my use pile pulls, I'm looking for these cards and these cards. When I'm, you know, checking my reserve deck, I'm, I know if these key things are activated, like he's, he, he's played that a lot. He plays it really well. Um, he used it in an online event, the, like the gym PC, I think to, um, to, I think he blew out like Paul Myers with, with it. Um, if I recall correctly. And, um, so he, he, it's, it's a, he, it's a good deck, but he plays it great. And so, um, that's a, that's a fantastic example of, um, going, going, playing to your strengths. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, thanks. Good, good point, Jared. Um, anyway, let the Wookiee wins. I couldn't find any good builds that I liked that beat stuff. Um, Dennis did go 4-0 day one with his, um, uh, it, it's a Chief Chirpus Hut one. So that means he starts, um, like my father before me. And, uh, you know, it's a massive Jedi Luke one. One, one reason why I didn't like this is having that finger on the pulse in the meta and knowing that bring him could be seen, um, is, uh, I think chief Chirpa's hut really struggles with bring him, um, because you take away Luke and that's their main like fighting power. And now, I mean, they've got other good characters, right? Like there's Anakin, there's a Bowie, there's like a Qui-Gon, there's some EPP rays, um, or OG ray, depending on what kind of builds you do or whatever. But like there's other strong characters, but without the Luke, they don't really hold up to bring him's characters where bring him's, you know, like adding battle destinies and, you know, likely eventually can just turn Luke even. Um, so I think this really struggled with bring him. And that's one reason why I, I didn't favor it coming in. Um, but I, I wasn't really liking light side. Um, if, if we look at light side, there was a bunch of old allies and that was one I was considering. Um, watch your step. I was considering. Um, I didn't bring it. I, I only brought two light sides with me. I brought no idea. And I brought Diplo. Um, and there, and my Diplo again was tuned to the meta in that, uh, let's see, I think it was pretty similar to Jeff Levine's, um, Treadwell on Jimp as, um, and, and our, I, I had been talking with him a little bit too, prepping for the event. And, um, we had added in the, the blue 11 and the combined fleet action to help with the Diplo match. Um, so the, the Diplo I had brought had the combined fleet action for the bring him match. Like it was, it was, it was tweaked for the meta, but there was still just a lot of matches I didn't really like for it. Um, so I wasn't really happy with light. I ended up on no idea and we'll take a look at that list in a minute. Um, actually we might as well know. 
Um, so I ended up with no idea. And again, combined fleet action. And and uh, the main use is against Brigham. They lose one. They can't lose. One, they won't lose one to Emperor's power. They won't bother because they're capped to one destiny. Um, so yeah, it uh, it. And then also, it's just good. Uh, it has blue 11. And blue 11 pulls like 11 characters in this deck. It pulls Baze. It pulls um, Yutani. It pulls Chirrut. It pulls Melshi. It pulls Vanden Willard. It pulls Pow. pulls the Indoor Commando team. It pulls Leia. Um, it pulls Jin. It pulls Saw. It pulls Taidu. So, not Boomont because he's... Uh, He's rebellion, not republic. It needs a republic character, a republic, non-pilot warrior ability less than four, or less than five, because it can pull Leia Rebel Princess. Um, so it pulls like eleven dudes in this deck. So you've got two, two of the Admiral's Order, so you can sit at your system, cap them to one destiny. You pull your blue eleven, which pulls a bunch of dudes. You move over to the beach. Um, I, I'll go ahead and open up, um, a Jimp deck list right now. Um, do, 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 uh, light, no idea. Um, this, this is out of date. This is not the list I played. Um, so I don't have it on Jimp. I had, you know, made some last minute changes. Um, so this version actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not the version I played because I dumped the Wisas. I had the Wisas and a boss nas chambers and i had cut those and i gained some extra slots so there was like some more characters in here and um anyway so this this what you're looking at right now is a couple cards short uh, my entire list is here on the you know if you go to the star wars you go to the home page and you go event deck lists and you click on nationals you'll see uh i'm there number four no idea and so here's the actual list I played. Um, this Jimp one is a little bit out of date because I, you know, last minute tweaks. I decided I didn't, didn't need the extra force from from the Oasis. Um, but this is this is essentially the deck. Um, yeah, uh, Kessling Kessling points out between Brigham and ISB, most of us moved off. Let the Wookiee win quickly. Yeah. Oh, the ISB. That's another point. So besides Brigham grabbing the Luke, ISB is pretty tough in in um, that. They can just like stack a docking bay with a walker and they can drain a bunch in space and and just they grind you out they retrieve one with the objective and they they just they just win so um it is yeah let the wookie win struggles against isb struggles against bring him and so um dennis did great with it but uh i, I don't know what matchups he saw um, but that's what i was worried about with it um so ISB or uh, no idea. I liked a lot. I think it has a, a good matchup against ISB because if you can find your Blount um, or you play two, little foreshadowing there for you, um, then you you can deploy Tanev from your reserve deck with your objective straight to their Coruscant system, um, and put Blount there. I did wonder if some people were going to switch off the Coruscant system for day two, knowing that Blount in Tanev four was a threat and switch to the site so that they could at least go down to the site and um, double agent or uh, never yarnal or trample. And so I did wonder if people were gonna switch to the site for day two and add in some never yarnals and tramples to deal with Blount. Um, in which case my plan was to um, use the Admiral's order to pull blue 11 to their site, like deploy a spy there first and then pull blue 11 to that site and then put Blount on board blue 11 so he couldn't be trampled. Um, but could he be never yarnled? Uh, yeah, it's just at same site, not present. So they could still never yarnle him, but I, I, I was wondering if people would, they didn't. Um, but that was my plan is put him on blue 11 to make him not trampleable. Of course, I also did have two perimeter scans, um, which, uh, Sam Yoshi on the, on Jemp, um, messaged me like, why are you playing two of those? I normally don't like shield pullers. I don't. Uh, just as a philosophy, I'm going to go, go on a side side rant here. Um, I think shield pullers are like super overrated as cards. People are like, oh, I pull my shields. I don't, I don't like. I'm happy with four shields. Four shields is a lot, and like if I get, it's it's rare that I get shield busted because I know what shields I need to play, <clears throat> and I 
choose them wisely. And so sometimes it'll be like, yeah, I wish I had this shield or maybe I pulled the weapon left shield too too early and it was a waste or whatever. But like in general, four shields is enough. What you're saying when you play a shield puller, let's ignore the other text that it does for a minute. What you're saying when you're, you're like, I like having a shield puller to, for the purpose of pulling a shield is that whatever my 61st card in my deck is, it's worse than my fifth shield. I would rather ha be able to deploy my fifth best shield than have my 61st card. And like, I have trouble believing that because I have so many good 61st cards where I'm like, ooh, I really want this in the deck. Ooh, I really want this in the deck. And I'm like, ooh, do I really want that fifth best shield? Is the fifth best shield really better than like the extra whatever card that I could add in? No. Um, so for me, shield pullers are just like very meh. Um, However, sometimes they're necessary um, dependent on the meta because of their other text. And specifically, Hear Me Baby Hold Together, when like Crush and I Have You Now is big and you're doing, you know, Hitco, you need some Hear Me Babies. Or if you're like, if you're, I like it in Light Mains because Hidden Weapons is a scary card. And so I like Hear Me Baby Hold Together for that. Um, perimeter Scan, I had two of them because Trample's real scary for this deck. And in the meta, I thought, um, some of the Brighams were running a one trample to go with their multiple Blizzard Force, um, just as so, like a control card. Um, so there was some Brighams that had a trample in it, running going into the event the week leading into the event. Um, ISB often runs a trample. I think the new Allies guys didn't, um, but ISB often runs a trample. Um, and the Tigidawat, uh Cloud City Occupation deck runs trample and so and and they might just go take try and take over your beach and so um trample's a real scary card so you want to make sure to be able to cancel that um and blizzard four was all over the meta it's in isb it's in tigatawat it's in um it's in bring him and um so if you can just block blizzard four from downloading something that could be pretty big and then um stormtrooper garrison sometimes seen um boba fett bounty hunter sometimes seen like in AOBS. Um, so it just, uh, it's just, I, I liked all the, all the extra stuff it did. And two, because I want to have it in hand. Like, I don't want to be like, yeah, I got my trample protection. And then they're like trample and it's floating somewhere in my deck. The two is for consistency. Um, so, and then, uh, double free ride combo because I expected, um, lots of ticket what there was not much in the field, um, turned out, but that was one that I expected a fair amount of. So two of those, and I found that the deck just, it wins once you have two of those. Um, and so the way this deck operates is like you, it's it's a real grindy deck. You basically, you, you pull your ships, you set up a stack of dudes either at the vault or the beach, um, and you just drain and damage. You get Luke up in space and you ping retrieve. You ping one with Stardust and you go projection. You have double projection to shut down their drains and menace fades. So your goal is to just kind of, it's, it's almost like ISB and that you're just trying to lock them out of damage. Like if they take over your beach, you drop a projection and you just go to the vault and you go, okay, you can drain me one there, whatever, Luke's retrieving it. And your goal is to just kind of like, or Black Sun, you're like, okay, um, I get Luke down to flip you back and I'm just putting projection on two of your Coruscant sites and um, Menace Fades is stopping the um, Fist adding one at the other site. And I'm just going to reduce your damage really low and retrieve some of it and just do slightly more damage than you um, get random retrieval with 10 men and things like that. So um, sort of just um, play a bunch of scrubs and, and pile up and lock them out and grind down. So that was light side. Um, I wasn't thrilled about it, but it, it seemed decent. Um, dark side. Um, I like the, I like the bring him. Um, I was debating between a lot of different dark sides um, I don't know if you can still hear me. My computer just switched windows again. Um, let's see. Hopefully that didn't cut out my mic there. Am I still live? What's going on? Something's all gray and weird. All right. I don't know. I think that worked. Um, dark side. I was, uh, I was debating between Tigatawat, uh, bring him ISB. Uh, Black Sun, like, I had a whole bunch of dark choices that were all good. Um, uh, Kyle Set Your Course is another one I was looking at. 
Um, I opted not to play Tigidawat because I thought everyone would just have free ride combos and um, it would just, it's not very good when occupation's not on table. Um, so I, I opted out of that. The Brigham I ended up choosing just because it was, it's really fun to play. Um, okay, cool. Thanks for confirming that guys. Apparently when my, I, I when I like try and alt tab, sometimes it switches to the other desktop. I never use the like virtual desktop thing, but I had like a bunch of crap open and I didn't want to close it. And so I opened up a new fresh window to stream and, but now it's, I never do this. So then I, I don't know what I'm doing and it keeps switching over sometimes. Thanks for confirming you. It's not affecting things. Um, so bring him, um, it's really fun to play. Cause you're just like, it's, it's, um, it only has three locations, which just feels like cheating. It's like back in the Nabu CRV days where you, where you just had the two locations and you activated off their icons and you um so then you had all these extra deck slots like this bring them is the same thing it activates two four six but then um the uh security precautions is another one seven emperor is going to be out eight one for yourself is nine and then almost every light is giving you a couple because throne room's pretty dead so like 10 11 and then a lot of times you'll just get out like Asidious or dooku or um uh, was there one more Maybe not. So you can also get out, you know, one of those um, Jedi Masters. And so you're getting like 12, 13 force. And generally you just like deploy one character a turn or you like drain and deploy a dude or something. So it's it's enough. Um, and that's, that's really nice that you just have. Um, so you've got four accelerates. So you can try and get that bridge quickly. And... Um, and then it's just fun to play because you get the Emperor there and you do Emperor's power and you're just like real aggressive with, you get out first strike and blast door controls and um, are just uh, attacking with stuff. Like you just, you throw throw Vader and Dooku and you throw characters at them and lose one to add with Emperor's power and it's got quite high destiny. And um, so it's a lot of fun to play. Um, I thought it was strong in the meta. I think it, matches up well against like a let the wookie main deck by taking their luke i think it matches up um well against random stuff like profit uh step well, i think it matches up great against diplo um old allies uh again can be tough if they had if they don't have the admiral's order you're great if they do um like i said we had the grand admiral thrawn and a, a couple of command to pullers for him and you know of course to uh to force push an appointment to help find him so um you shut off the Admiral's Order, and then you just aggressively battle. And it's it's a lot of fun. Um, none of Team Marco Polo was going. Dylan Silverglen, P. Myers. Yes, Dylan uh, <laughs> Dylan Silverglen and Paul Myers are the main um, people who have been playing Tigidawa recently. Um, Dylan and Paul especially. And, um, yeah, none of them were attending the event. But but it's it's a very strong deck and it's very easy to play. Like I could, I could take a player who's, you know, a NARP and just write a script for them. That's like pull executor with mob points, pull Piet with indoor shield, pull the, like activate, pull your executor docking bait, deploy Piet, pull your admiral's order, use the admiral, uh, you know, drop your free executor effect, drop the executor, use your admiral's order to pull a walker in your turn. Next turn, like pull a docking bay, pull your occupation, deploy a walker with the, with the, you know, um, with the Admiral's order, deploy a guy on it, de uh, next to it, deploy an occupation, consolidate them together, docking bay trains it over, go, like, uh, deploy occupation, go, like, and, you know, next turn, damage, go to the third site with a, like, it's, it's just, it's very easy to play, um, there are, of course, nuances, what happens when the opponent interacts, what cards do you deploy where, when do you need to go off planet, like, mine and Kessling's game, where I played Tigatawat, and he played Old Allies in the top four, was a really cool interactive game that went totally off script. Um, so it does change, but the general game plan setup is basically always the same. It's very straightforward and it's very strong. It is a very good deck. And so I, I expected to see um, see more players playing it than, than I did. Um, but I think a lot of top players, and I know uh, when I talked about it with some other players at the event, several mentioned we figured everyone would have uh, have um free ride combos and um and you know like i said i did i had two free ride combos i would have just beaten it if they had played it so um that's why i think it was seen less but i did still expect to see it 
Um, so the Bring Him deck, it's a real good deck. Again, props to Desai, um, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, so that's what I played. Um, all right, I think that's all the pre-tournament prep stuff. Um, went out to an amazing steak dinner with uh, Charlie and Mishki and Lee Edwards and Hayes and Kyle and myself Friday night, and got delicious steak and lobster tail. Um, just sort of chilled. Um, I was planning on commentating the team event, but then the, the, they had internet issues that night. Um, so just just had had a lot of fun with people. Uh, it was just such a, a good weekend seeing everyone. Um, so uh, late Friday or maybe early Saturday, I decided on the no idea over the Diplo and I made my last couple tweaks and, um, and rolled with it. Um, so game one, uh, I was no idea and Dennis was map. And um, my recollection on all these games is just, I'll do my best, but, you know, I, I played 12 games, Star Wars games over the weekend, and um, and then I had no sleep last night, a little bit on the plane and a little nap, so every, everything's a fog, but I'm going to do my best. Um, that game was streamed, that was the first game of the day, it was on the stream, it is on the PC's YouTube channel, so uh, if you want to actually watch that game and see the commentary on it, you can go watch and see how bad my memory was, um, but I'll tell you uh, what I can recall, um, which actually is not very much. Um, I uh, I set up a bunch of spies. He he had trouble. He actually um, he was activating everything he needed. Like I think he activated the emperor first turn, so he had to get him out the next turn. So he um, so he just like deployed some random stuff turn one, um, and. I meanwhile was like pulling ships with my objective and just like drawing and saving. And um, his plan normally is to like get Emperor and pull the Dakar system with the the like Emperor effect, and then use a guy at the 10 landing site to pull the Jaku system. So he's got a couple systems out and stuff, but he couldn't he couldn't get the systems when he needed them. So at some point he had to pull the Jaku system and Dakar just like floated. Um, so it was kind of an awkward board state for him trying to get everything he wanted but he was basically just like drawing he was going slow he was drawing i think he drew to like an 18 or 20 card hand um and he was just drawing and saving a bunch and so i was drawing i didn't want to go above 12 so i was drawing and saving and just going a little slower than him um but i i eventually piled some dudes into the data vault and i think i got the admiral's order down um but maybe not because he might have he might have flipped or maybe i didn't maybe i went to a the other system because I didn't want to flip quite yet um, so I could keep pulling my ships. Either way, I'm at the data vault. I'm in space. He gets out the finalizer in some space. Um, I'm pinging with Stardust. He's draining at the beach. Um, he gets a U3PO down at my vault. Um, oh, oh, and the first character he deployed to the beach was Min, uh, which is annoying because I have double projection in the deck, but Min says projection does nothing. Um, so I couldn't even walk link for projection. So the first character he puts down is Min. I can't, I can't projection it. So, um, so, uh, he gets U3PO down to my site and I top deck Corrin. So I don't have an answer for that. Um, one of the bubble cards is a quite a mercenary V. So that, that can definitely be a consideration if you're, if you're working on tweaking, I have no idea. Um, and so, uh, he gets U3PO down. He's just blocking that drain. It's only a drain of one, but it's one less damage. He takes a turn. I get Jin down to the beach to block that drain. Um, and eventually I just get a bunch of space like piled up. I get the Falcon and I get Tanev and I think probably Bright Hope and I get like, um, I just, and, and pilots and I've got Luke out who's ping retrieving. Oh, and I get Ray. So she's also down at the, he's flipped for like a turn, maybe two. And I get Ray down to the vault with everyone and use pile, pull something good and, and raise my resistance agent, of course. So that flips him back. She's totally safe, like interior. Um, and I... And I'm I'm like way outpowering him in space. So at one point, like I get some battles through in space, and he's having to forfeit some stuff. And then I start chasing in space. So now, with the drain on the ground locked out um, because of Jin, and with his space locked out because I'm chasing, and with Luke retrieving, he's not really doing much damage. But he he has a chance to come in and like just wreck me. He deploys um, with his giant hand. He deploys Dengar with gun, <clears throat> Doctory combo and uh kylo and lightsaber and he battles and i play keep your eyes open because obviously i don't want dengar 
Dengar, who shoots twice, and Kylo to hit three characters and then um, just operate, operate, operate. And then I'm down to like very few characters and he just clears me out. Like, so I play Keep Your Eyes Open and he plays Sense. Um, but he draws a uh, Dopeld, who is Destiny 6 plus Hux add one to make it 7. Um, and of course, Emperor's ability 7, so the sense draw fails. Um, and so the Keep Your Eyes Open goes through, which is just huge, right? Um, not being able to Doctor E. So then I, uh, I think I draw, I draw, uh, oh, and then I, I draw an Admiral's, I think I draw an Admiral's order for my destiny. I draw, yeah, I draw a six for battle destiny and Ray adds one to make it a seven. So then he can't just forfeit Dr. E. So he has to lose either Kylo or the other two. So he loses two to his own Kylo battle. And then he decides to forfeit Kylo for seven. Um, and then I think I walkling to keep your eyes open and then I use Vanden Willard, who acts like a 3PO, to grab the Keep Your Eyes Open back. Yeah, <laughs> live by the dope held, die by the dope held. Yeah, that was that was bad luck for him because he had, I think he had like an eight card reserve deck or something. And he, you know, drew drew his like 12% chance or whatever to, to fail the sense draw. So that was unfortunate for him. Um, and then I, and then I, you know, did the pro play of I'm going to walkling my... Uh, my keep your eyes open back, and then I'm gonna 3PO Van and Willard it into my hand and battle and clear those other guys. And um, so basically, I'm just pinging one with Stardust every turn and draining either one when I'm at Scarif or two when I'm at Jakku in space as I chase him around in space with my like 30 power to his like 15 or whatever. After I, I think I killed the Steadfast at one point, he was like 20 something, and then I killed the Steadfast, and he's just running with Finalizer. And so I'm draining one or two every other turn in space, and I'm pinging one with Stardust, and he goes down with like with a few guys over to his Jaku site that's going to do one, and um, but I'm still retrieving one with Luke, so he's not really getting any damage through, and I am, and I've just got board control, and then the fire alarm goes off, and so we all have to head outside, um, and while we're outside, we chatted a little bit about it, and you know, I had it, I had it locked up. And uh, he realized he said some comment that makes me think that he thought it was like diff mattered or something. So, but then when he, he realized like it didn't because it strength the schedule, like he just was like, oh yeah, this yeah this game's over. So we went back in after the fire alarm, and uh, just he he conceded immediately. Um, so that was basically the the game is is I stack everyone, I get Ray there, so he's flipped back. I get Luke in space to ping retrieve. And I ping with Stardust and Jin blocks a drain. And um, for the other drain, I could either projection or I was going to come down with some spies. And um, so, yeah, it was a, it was a, a straightforward game. But the huge turning point, of course, was the missed sense on the keep your eyes open. Um, so I'm one to know, and uh, went everything went according to plan. Um, my next game, I am bring him before me and I play against uh, Stephen Harpster's um, Let the Wookiee Win. Where is Harpster on this list? Oh, he's not on the, he doesn't use Jimp, so he didn't submit it in the right format to, to already be up here, but he has a Let the Wookiee Win mains. It's a Chief Chirpa's Hut mains, um, you know, so I'm sure it's very similar to this, Dennis. But they're all, it's all like, you're going to have five Lukes, you're going to have two, two, one to two, sorry about the mess combos, one to two clash, you're going to have like, we says um speak with the jedi council like there's some flavor choices like like a barrier canceler and under attack uh, which under attack is a good call in this meta um for the same reason i was talking about tr the, the trample protection earlier um you know you'll, you'll have some little flavor choices like you have one blaster deflection or do you you know use a a, a dodge or a jedi's concentration or something or um but you know are you using ray with saber or og or but essentially Sim, sim, very very similar deck um harpster was playing that like i mentioned earlier though um i came so i let's see how did this game go um i came down with i got my emperor set up in my sights um i came down with uh blizzard four and vader and his saber to my indoor site and he came down with uh luke so that he didn't lose to your destiny over to his kashik site and deployed a saber on him so, um, and then the next turn, like I paid to drain for three and then like I drew and saved and then he like paid to drain three 
and like drew and saved and then i paid or he paid to drain two because it was his cash excite with a luke saber so i'm draining three and he's draining two so my next turn i'm just like i pay to drain three and i like drew and saved maybe i i think i deployed maybe one extra character but maybe not and then his turn he paid to drain for two and then he deploys an obi with luke and and oh and at one point he does a wisa to pull the battle plane so i know he's planning to go to two places but i'm not I'm not like doing anything real fancy because um, I'm doing three to his two and I'm happy to let him change the board state and then me react to it and, and me react, attack into wherever's weaker. There's, you know, the idea is I'm winning and the onus is on him to change that. And if I just go try and change that by attacking preemptively, like I could attack into a big old mess with, you know, say I play Sidious and Newt and try and draw three destinies and then he clashes or he sorry combos or just whatever stuff could go wrong so like i'm con I'm content to wait him out so um but then the next turn he's he's gonna get that all set up so what i do is i put down like maul and phantom menace in front of luke and obi it's obi Ken obi one kenobi virtual that has the hand swap and um i put down Um, Maul and Phantom Menace and then a Sith probe droid and I put like Ninth Sister with the Blizzard 4 and then I probe droid Vader over who captures Luke so now and so now he's got I do that after he goes to the battle planes he goes with like Chewie with Bowcaster and like Solo and someone else a third character like Hera or something I don't know um, so he so he goes to the battle planes and deploys all that crap so now he's going to do four to my three so that's when I go Maul, Saber, Phantom Menace and warp vader over with a sith probe droid so now he's doing two at the battle planes i'm doing two at the forest clearing but i've captured luke so now it's obi against a maul invader with phantom menace on table so um he he deploys some characters into it and we battle and i think he has to stack a card and like he loses some stuff um I'm losing to like Emperor's power, but I'm doing a lot of damage. And then at one point he doesn't have a force saved. So I play like first strike and I battle and get in just a, like a ton of overflow, like 18 overflow, I think. And so he just has to peel a bunch and that's basically the end of the game. Um, without Luke, it's, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to fight very efficiently. So I get a, a big first strike beat down. Um, and I think he had some like helpful cards in his hand that you know he couldn't play like a deflection or like a, a leadership to limit my destinies or something. Um, but first strike is good. So my next game um, is my no idea again versus Kevin Shannon's ISB, and um, we he does the free executor and I set up at the data vault and get some ships out to like random location. I get out the Tanev. And start to drain and he puts the um he puts a spaceport docking bay there with some random isb guys to make it a drain zero minus one from the objective and he takes over my beach as well with like veers in walker and garrison and a bunch of stuff like that um i think he deployed all that onto my characters i had a pile at the beach and so then i had to move into the vault so i was doing zero at the vault because the drain minus one i was just pinging one with stardust and retrieving one with luke and he was draining a bunch more but then I was able to turn the tape, uh, and then I put a, a per I think I put a projection on the beach. Um, so he's doing like two in space and draining like three on the ground. Um, but then I was able to um, get Blount out and flip him back, and that cut out a lot of his damage. Um, and uh, and then there was one turn he he tried to go to like two systems, so he like moved. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, this was before I did that. I deployed a ship in front of his executor so that I could enforce my Admiral's order for the turn. So he he moved, like, Vader, Callus, Stormtrooper Garrison, and someone else, some ISB agent, to go with Callus. I think Callus? Yeah. Um, to All to the vault to, to attack. He was going to get three destinies between the the stormtrooper and callus and ability um so he was gonna get three destinies but i deployed like 
Bright Hope or something stupid in front of his executor. So that enforced my Admiral's order to cap him from three destinies down to one. And I battled with a bunch of power. So I outpowered him by like, um, by exactly 18. It, he must, it must have only capped him from two to one because he must not have had another ISB agent because I outpowered him by exactly 18 and Callus is six, the Garrison four and the Vader eight exactly covered. So I was able to clear Vader, Callus, Garrison, um, and, um, and then move my ship away. And that made him a lot weaker at the beach so that later I could move out in front of his veers, um, which I don't know that I ever did, but it was very much a live option because by that point I, I had turned the tides and I, since Blount was out, um, he wasn't draining plus one at any sites. My, my Coruscant system drain was not minus one. My data vault drain was not minus one. So now I was doing slightly more damage than him and I was retrieving with Luke and he was not retrieving with his objective. So now I had the math on my side um, and he was only barely ahead in life force and I was catching up every turn. So I don't even think I bothered to move out to the beach, but I could have. Um, and so at that point, uh, time was called. It was my turn, beginning of my turn, or it was the end of his turn, I think. And then it started my turn and he was at like 17 to my 16, but he only had like one or two in hand. So like I drained and he lost all his ones in hand and I pinged down from Stardust and that pinged him from, he was at 17, I was at 16, that pinged him down to 16. So we were tied and then I retrieved, oh, I must've still been down one because I retrieved one with Luke and that tied us. And then I retrieved with Walkling and that put me up by one. Um, so I ended up winning 17 to 16 on time. Um, but also if that game had played out, I was, I was draining more and retrieving more. And like, I was, I was gaining like two every round. So if, if we kept playing, um, I, I'm, I could have just, anyway, uh, I was, I was going to win in the long game, but I also managed to on the last turn pop up above, above, above him in life force. He was down to 16 in deck and zero in hand. And I was at like, I ended with 17 in deck and like two or three in hand still. Um, so I, I, uh, what a shock. We, Kevin and I timed out, um, no idea versus ISB, but I did pull that one out. So I started out 3-0 and I'm feeling pretty good. Um, stuff's going to plan, but then, um, next I play bring him against Justin decides old allies. And, um, this game was like a disaster. Um, I, I played very poorly and I had some bad battles early. Um, I deployed Vader and Saber to his site to start draining and he just flies up. And he gets out like Leia Rebel Princess to his one of his ships, and that's real bad because now it's just going to negate Vader's drains. And I'm kind of choked. He never deploys his two two site, so like kind of choked. And um, I throw down. Uh, he he he's got Poe and Calrissian on the Falcon, turn one, um, and then he gets out like a Corvette and stuff. And I throw down Maul on his ship. And I should have just cloaked, but I decided to battle, and I battle in Emperor's power. And then I I think either he had the leadership with Radis up there, or like I drew really low, but I'm way outpowered. So I had to lose Maul and peel a couple, and then I should have just cloaked so I could drain free, and that would stop him from flipping too if I'm at a site. And then and then I could have waited until I got like Thrawn to go with um to go with the Maul. But anyway, I got impatient. I went to space. It was a bad play. Um, so I had to lose some cards. And so he's just draining in space. He's like laying my my other drain when I can afford it. And um, and then eventually he just gets out like a pile of stuff. He's, he's like out activating me. He's doing more damage. And um, eventually like... I, I conceded. I don't. I don't even remember the second half of the game. I was. I was. I was pretty tilted after, after just like, not cloaking with Maul and just taking a very bad battle that I initiated. Um, so, yeah, that that it was not a good game for me. Um, and I carried that tilt into the next game. Um, um, the next game was my uh, no idea um, versus. Uh, Matt Sperling set your course. So he's doing set your course and um, he's just like cycling through his deck with like a four lum or something. Um, and it, it must have been four lum because he's like he's pulling a Krennic with his objective because it has Death Star in title. 
um, Krennic Death Star Commandant. He's pulling Krennic and then he's putting it back with Forlom to like cycle through his deck and get his hand set up. And I go with, um, I use my objective to pull, I think Lightmaker was the only thing in there. I used, I pulled Lightmaker and I put out Hunchui Falcon and I put like Blount, I think, on board as like a passenger. Because I'm like, he's doing space stuff. So he started, he started the the shuttle interrupt and um, bow to the first order and quad drive yards and he pulls some systems so like i know it's a space deck so and he goes like he deploys shuttle which pulls kylo to his death star docking bay and then he like deploys an emperor with it and he disembarks kylo and so he's like set up to drain free and but he's gotten a bow pull and he go, and he's like he's been cycling and stuff so i go like han Chewy falcon with a blount passenger <clears throat> and light maker and i'm like that's fairly safe it's it, he's got a forfeit six, forfeit eleven, forfeit nineteen, and power twelve, and a destiny to power and a battle destiny. And like maybe he has a lateral, but like blount. That's why I threw the extra blount forfeit on there in case of lateral, whatever. I'm like, it's that's fine. Like I, I, I think I, I set up a couple spies, um, some spies, and moved out to the beach with the plan. So like I'm stacked at the beach with some spies, and and that, and then I go to space, and then he comes down with like tyrant, I think. And he plays a tractor beam and and he he like battles and he plays whatever it is our first catch of the day or something or in range or whatever one of the one of the whatever the interrupts are nobody actually knows them except like three people um and they just they like play all their interrupts so he was, he's like i target it and this adds two and then he plays like uh one that you know used can add two or lost he plays it lost to add four and then he draws like a six so he's like i'm a million um, and so like he just instantly captures the Falcon mid battle. So it's just light maker against his ship and so and he gets a destiny because KDY So I have to lose the light maker in like four and I have a Hujix and I use the Hujix Yeah in range so nobody knows it except the people who play tractor beams and Adam Fletcher because Adam Fletcher is uh, Knows everything um, That's why people joke. He's like Siri um so in range, he and he captures a Falcon mid battle, and I'm gonna have to like peel four with my light maker, so I hujix it. Um, and so then at this point, I, uh, I I decide I need to spread out on the ground, so I go into my data vault, um, but like too thin. I think I just put like a cheer it in there, and this was dumb because then he comes down with like EPP Vader and. And then he throws since I'd already used a hujix, he put me on not having two, so he just like throws random crap with it too like <clears throat> Americ steel and stuff but he was just and some other characters there was like four characters he came down with and he goes to swing with vader and he's like um he goes to swing and he like flips over destinies right as i'm going like i want to cancel that and then he's like oh but like do you cancel the targeting or the draw and like i read it and i'm checking and i'm like i think it's the targeting and he's like well it's too late and like we talk about it for a minute and i'm like Look, there's no scenario, whether it's the draw or the targeting, there's no scenario here where I'm not canceling, like where I'm just going to be like, yeah, I'm going to risk letting you hit. And so, yes, you flipped over the destinies and yes, that's information, but like you were going kind of fast and like, obviously my intent is going to be to cancel. Like it, anyway, he was cool about it. That's the end point of this story is like, he was like, yeah, you're right. Like it's, it's fine. You let me cancel. I realized anyway I was defense value plus two and like I was it was a miss anyway but he was cool with with realizing like yeah that's fine you wanted to cancel that's fine you can cancel that um and so I appreciate that that was a that was a classy move by him um but anyway I so I put my character out of play to cancel it because that was what my intent was regardless of the fact that we had seen the destinies and then realize like nope he is defense value plus two that's a miss my intent was to cancel it so i went ahead and put the character out of play um and and canceled the thing and then he just the first one that he had drawn for the swing we used is his battle destiny um but anyway it didn't it didn't matter it was a moot point because then i i was still down even with my forfeit i was still down by like 10 or 12 more so then i peeled like a bunch more from that and then i was just like so far behind he's like I, I was draining two at the beach and pinging one and he was training like four in space and one at the vault and what like and plus i had you know already peeled a bunch and stuff so i was just way behind so i conceded um he just he crushed me um like that tractor beam deck just uh is you know it it it's it, it was a it was a 
very uh, well designed deck and a very um, well played uh, deck by the player. Yeah, so um, tractor beams are. Uh, oh, Adam says, I know because I coded tractor beams in Jimp. Yeah, um, actually, Phil, when. Uh, when we were talking, when we were chatting in our, our Team 5 Slack, um, like mid-round, and I mentioned Tractor Beams, Phil's like, yeah, I was actually just trying to think the other day um, of what are the most broken cards not coded in GIMP, so they might be under people's radars, and I, I, I didn't mention Tractor Beams to you guys, and I was like, oh, they're actually coded. They got coded a couple months ago, and so Phil didn't know that, but yeah, I, I did, and that's... um. That's very cool. Um, very glad to have your contributions, Adam, because not only the, all the deck stats you do and everything, the fact that um, now we can go see tractor beam, not that one, that one, we can see tractor beams um, in here and, and play those online is very, very cool. Um, so uh, Batmouse in the chat has a tractor beam deck he is offering to Joker King, which is very cool of him. Everyone go bother Batmouse if you want to see a tractor beam deck or uh, actually Matt Sperling's deck. Uh, which tab are we here? Let's just start over here. Go to deck lists. Um, here we got, let's look at, let's look at uh, Sperling's tractor beam deck here. So yeah, he's he's got a couple four alums and he, he does He's got Krennix to cycle. He's got Kylo and Hux. Oh, Hux was another one who went down to the data vault. He went at EPP Vader and he went Hux to like used pull and Merrick Steel and um, not very many tractor beams, but they were effective. He played like a flawless marksmanship. I think that was the add four, an in range, and then a flawless marksmanship. He doesn't actually have a ton of tractor beam um, slot, a ton of slots devoted to it between, you know, two tractor beams, a homing beacon, flawless marksmanship, two in range. <laughs> but because of his his bow used pile pulls, he's able to get them out effectively. Um, so looks this looks like a fun deck. He's got he's got some uh, space guns, the laser cannon battery and tie guns um, that it can be used, of course, on Onyx one and two. Um, he can pull the finalizer with his bow and the shuttle with the interrupt, and then he's got stalker tyrant that he can pull with death squadron. And so he's got a lot of like star destroyers and space weapons and uh, tractor beams, and then he's got some random ground stuff and. Um, so anyway, yeah, he just crushed me. It was not close. Um, and, uh, that was game five. And so now after starting three, and zero, I lost to Desai and I lost to Sperling and now I'm three and two and I'm like on the cusp of losing on the cusp of not making the cut at three and two. Like I need to win out. I need to win my next three in a row if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to qualify. So it's, uh, what's it, lose and go home? Is the term for something like that? Um, so my next game, I'm playing Bring Him. I'm playing against Mike Turner's Watch Your Step. Um, I think Bring Him is quite favored over Watch Your Step. However, he played this like really well. Um, I got out, um, He, what am I doing? I guess I'm pulling up his watcher step. Turner. Oh, it's not uploaded because he did the wrong format. All right. Well, um, he was doing watcher step. I get Vader with Saber out. Turn one. I think I activated the Emperor, so I just wanted to use some force and get Vader and Saber out and um, to his cantina. And he, like, plays projection and pulls a Luke. For real cheap and gets a used power pull and like moves Luke in to be captured and so I start losing to my objective and I'm draining and I can't find a ship for a long time and so like I'm kind of taking over the sights but he's um he gets down like a character and is able to dodge away I don't have my Lana combo and so he's he's kind of messing around on the ground and he gets a castle run set up and um he's draining in space and like we're he's um He's got like a stacked Falcon at Kessel. He goes Mirax to Tatooine, and I'm able to get out a Maul and ship and do a um, Emperor's Power and get in a couple High Destiny and clear out the Mirax and the ship. So now I'm established in space, and I'm at least draining free, but I've lost a lot to 
Emperor's power and my objective now and to some of his uh, drains. So, uh, most of the time I'm at three battlegrounds to make the castle only a drain of two, but it's still starting to add up. Um, uh, and I decide I'm just going to go turn Luke. I'm just going to track some track some cards. And I, I got two stacked on Insignificant Rebellion real early. Or not real early, but by mid-game. And so I decide I've, I'm just... I'm just going to take the guaranteed like turn and um so i warp vader over and um and without vader there now he's able to establish at the cantina a little bit so he's i'm starting to get real low in life force we're, we're, he's uh, he's probably at like 15 and i'm at 10 but then i track a couple ones using four lom and uh and i flip a seven to turn luke and of course and and i i ended up stacking a third insignificant card he goes over to the he goes over to the forest at one point with some guys that i have to go kill and it was just it was very he played it really well um but i i had lots of different paths to victory um and i decided about mid game that he had been doing a lot of damage and i wanted to just i had i had got just got my second one stacked and so i was like i'm just gonna track some low destiny lose the duel um and then turn luke so that's what i did um oh it's it's the phrase is win or go home. I think I said it as lose and go home, which is also accurate. If you lose, you go home, lose and go home. But win or go home is, is yeah, the term. Good call. Um, so I won that one. I'm four and two. Uh, my next one, uh, my next game was also on stream. It was game seven. It is on the PC's YouTube channel. It is me versus Mark Walseth's bring him before me. Um, I have no idea. Um, turn one, I get a verify. He he looks for like Emperor, and he'd activated it. So I get a verify, and I look, and basically his deck is uh, actually. Let me pull up. Oh, I don't think he did his list in the right format, so I don't think we get to look at it, which is sad. Um, let's see. Wall set. Oh no, he did bring him. Sweet. So here's his list. It's six artilleries, six point mans, um, uh, six blizzard fours. He, he starts a defensive perimeter. Um, and yeah, it's, I notice a limited resources in there. Like it's, it uses drop and, um, it's got four Sith probe droids and two Vader's. And the idea is you use blizzard four to get out Vader and you, um, you have an attack cannon that you upload with prepare for a surface attack that forfeits for three. If they attack your blizzard four at the, at the third marker, then you, Lose one with Emperor's power to add a destiny. So your power eight and two destinies, and you can forfeit the gun used for three. And if they draw higher than that, you forfeit it used and lose the Blizzard four. And then you just pull the gun again and play another one. And you can just keep attacking them so that you can turn Luke or so that you can um, like do a bunch of damage. And, um, and so then I... Um, oh, Cal says he thinks I was quite likely to be the top five and three on tiebreakers. Anyway, I might have been. I played. I played Kevin Shane and I played Dennis. Um, uh, but and I played Desai, Shannon, Dennis, Desai. Like, uh, but maybe not. I don't know. It, it, either way, I wanted to go six and two. Um, so so I got a verify on turn one and I missed. I, I saw all the artilleries and like, okay, I'm gonna save my grabber for that. And what I missed was that his Sith Fury was non-V. And the non-V one says, light draws three destinies, dark draws two. And if dark can get higher than light in those two, then when light, then when you duel, you do it right before the Brigham duel. Then when you duel, if light loses, they lose six extra. So essentially, um, and this happened later in the game, what happened is while Seth drew uh, seven, seven for his two Sith Fury destinies, and I drew a total of like 10 or 12 between my three destinies. I drew like, you know, and so, he, and then he drew seven, seven for the actual duel and I drew less than that. So then I have to lose nine for the duel instead of three. Um, so Johnny Chu had a deck like this a few years ago, maybe back in 2016 or so, um, designed by one of the team Albany guys like Giannetti or something. Um, and it's, it's, it's basically a gimmick deck. Um, and if you see it coming, you can beat it, but I, I just missed the slip on my verify, which is just awful. And, um, and so, uh, so anyway, um, what, what I needed to do was just put Luke on the blizzard on, on the, um, not blizzard, but on the blue 11 
and just have him pilot and just eat three to your destiny for not having Luke present at a battleground and just peel three every turn to that. I had shut down his walker damage at the at the third marker because I put up projection and menace fades out. So that was doing zero. So I should have just eaten three every turn and then Luke would have been piloting Blizzard 11. So then I would have retrieved one. So it would have taken a net two damage every turn, which is um, the same as I was doing with the objective out. Uh, I was doing a, a net because I was he was I was taking three, but then he was taking one to his own objective. So that nets the same as me just taking two. Um, I, and I thought about it and I almost did that with Luke and then I didn't. I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and let him stay start taking damage from his objective. And that was dumb. Um, that obviously I would have insta won the game because then he couldn't have done his whole dueling plan. But um, so what happened is I'm, but I'm just, I'm draining two at the beach. I'm part, start us pinging one. I'm draining one at the system. I go to his um, security tower and I'm draining for two there. And, um, and I just, uh, and then I'm just like playing really cautiously, really safe. Um, Joker King says, watching the Wall Seth game, I was surprised with how many characters you deployed after the verify. I don't know if you put them on more characters. Yeah. So all he had was the Emperor and Vader and probe droids. Like, but I didn't know if he had like Ninth Sister. And he actually, we talked a little bit after the game, and he said Ninth Sister was in there until he had just recently cut it. I didn't know if he had Ninth Sister or um, anything like that. And I didn't want to, like at one point I had kraken and a spy at his um security tower and someone else too i think i had like three guys but none of them were ability enough ability for um ninth sister none of them were greater than three and so what i was worried is he'd come down with ninth sister lose one with uh emperor's power draw two destiny my total would be zero so he'd outpower me i'd have to lose two guys and then one guy's still stuck there, and I'd have to stack a card, more importantly. And then one guy's still stuck there, and if I battle into him and just, like, hoojicks it, I have to stack a second one. And once two are stacked, they can turn Luke with a seven. And I know he has a ton of sevens, so all he needs to do is win two battles. And so I was playing, I was not playing against the Sith Fury um, plan. I was playing against a what if he gets two cards stacked, essentially just by going Ninth Sister clearing two of my three guys, and then the third is just, like, screwed. So I piled a couple extra guys so that he couldn't do that. <coughs> so I was just basically over-deploying. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That was a good question. Um, so I was I was way, I was way over-deploying because I didn't want him to get any cards stacked um, and just playing really safe because I know he's doing zero damage with his drain, and he's getting three in with a duel because he's going to win the duel every time. But he's losing one to his objective. He's losing two to the security tower drain. That's three. He's losing one to Stardust. Makes four. Two to the um, two to the beach. Makes six. One to Scarif system is seven. And then sometimes when I at the end I move to Dude over to the data vault with my objective makes eight. So he's eating eight. I'm eating three. Like I know I'm I know I'm massively out damaging him. I've deployed a lot more, but I'm just playing ultra safe by over deploying. Um, and then he does a Sith Fury, and I'm like, oh, crap, that Johnny Chu deck. Why, when I verified, I didn't look to, I just assumed this was V. And so that was the dumbest, hey, like, I should have, I thought about the, the blue 11 play anyway, and for whatever reason, I just didn't, and I should have. Um, that would have just instantly got a handshake. Um, but anyway, so he gets a Sith Fury V off, um, and I get like a 10 to his, he in by then he's got four sevens in a row tracked so he goes seven seven he's got 14 to my 10 um so then he duels and gets seven seven again and uh i get less than 14 on my two destinies um and so i have to peel six for the duel or three for the duel and six for the sith fury i peel nine and suddenly it's like ooh, this became suddenly a close race if he gets off another sith fury he might win this um but luckily uh i was tracking and so at one point i had five five um, I drew like a five. Oh, at one point I drew a five five to tie the duel, because um, he also drew a ten or something, or maybe maybe I just drew five five but still lost. Either way, I had like a five five tracked, but then he like shuffled my deck with Omnibox and I activated. Anyway, at some point um, I activate. I've got four in deck and it's like two threes and a five or, or two threes and two fives, and um, I use Vanden Willard and one of the threes comes off the top and so then um on his turn when he duels um i draw three five five so the three is my bottom of 
used pile and then five five above that and that's when i think i had to peel nine but then i'm able to van willard another five on top so my used pile is five 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 three and then i just activate it all so now i've got that all tracked and he he had already used his omnibox combo um at that point and so now when he plays his second sith fury um i draw five 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 so i have 15 for my total to his 14 so i don't lose the sith fury which means when he wins a subsequent duel which he did um i only lost three instead of nine that saved me six extra force loss and so then i'm able to drain him down to where he can't keep enough cards to do another sith fury um and so then i i drain him out and i win um but essentially the the game losing play was not verifying that uh that Sith Fury was non-V, but the game winning play was tracking three fives to win a Sith Fury. And then I was just locked in, unless he found his Omnibox again, um, I was just going to... Actually, it didn't even matter because at that point, my bottom three of my reserve were 5-5-5. Five, five, five. And so what I was going to do was activate it all except those three so that even if he Omniboxed, then Sith Furyed, I would just have 5-5-5. Five, 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 and then I couldn't draw anything for the duel, so I'd auto-lose a duel and auto-lose three, but that's fine. I wouldn't be losing nine. Um, so... I was I was Omnibox immune at that point as well, or my plan would have been, but I think it didn't last another turn past that. Um, so, but just coming up with the plan of like, okay, I need to not lose that Sith Fury battle is helped helped win the game. So, I was a, it was a interesting, fun game. Um, I definitely overdeployed, being very cautious. I definitely um, should have noticed that Sith Fury was um, not V. They actually the Luke Popsicle was made after Chu played that deck to kind of make it more viable so that if you played against something like Old Allies or WAP or um, Hyperdrive, that you could still do a Luke and you could still do Sith Fury. Or maybe it was made right before and that's what made it viable enough that Chu played it, whatever. But it was it was around that time frame, I think, and Chu played it. Um, so if you're playing against Brigham, check, check to see if Sith Fury has a V-slip or not. Um, but I was able to pull that one out. Um, so now I was uh, five and two, and my last game was bring him against Matt Sperling's old allies, and um, this was a straightforward like just beat down. He went to space, and but I was I, I came down with a bunch of stuff to ground, and um, and he tried to come fight me, and I was able to just like beat him up. I used a sniper dark strike to clear somebody, and then I was able to just like overflow ray for a whole bunch um he wanted to clear my vader i think with oh yeah he cleared vader with like padme and epp ray and like one or two other characters but um i was able to like hit someone no no he played keep your eyes open i think i wasn't able to hit someone but i drew two good destinies with with um emperor's power and so i was able to to clear a couple characters and then like no escape and get vader again and more characters and sniper dark strike and like just overflow and emperor's power and overflow ray for like nine or ten so so he had a good play of like clearing vader and he had the like he had to keep your eyes open and he had the padme and he, he did clear me off but i got a couple good destinies with with emperor's power there and then i was able to to clap back at him and and counter beat and and had had the sniper dark strike trick to just clear out uh ray in like nine and so then and then he was just on the back foot then he you know he was paid to drain in space but then i was able to come down and just keep attacking i flipped him back a couple times where he'd come down with like a lorsen tech and something and i'd go kill it and um so it only went on it went on you know a few more turns but it was it was mostly like um going through the motions so he conceded after that and uh, I was able to at least get my revenge for the tractor beam game. But he was, again, a gentleman in, in that game as well. So I'm, I'm glad he is now coming out to events. And uh, super nice nice guy. He played he played well. Um, so I was 6-2. and two. Um, I made the top 8. And uh, which this was the order. Um Kevin Shannon just is a ridiculous fellow. Can take six game, six years off from playing, come back, 
not even do that much catch up. It's not like he's been prepping for months. He didn't know like what Noida did. He had no idea what Map did. He like he was having to read cards and just like and still was just playing so well. He he finished above me. <laughs> like um, he finished third on on the day. So um, Charlie went seven and one. He actually went seven and zero, oh, and then was paired against Dennis his last game and just scooped to him because Dennis was six and one at that point. Um, so that they would both be in at seven and one. Um, however, they were both already in already. Even De if Dennis took a second loss, he still would have been six and two and made it. They were both already in. There's no reason for them to play it. Um, and but but also Charlie was old allies and Dennis was Map and Map would have crushed old allies. So it was already like a, okay, there's no need to play this game and you're gonna win anyway. So I concede to you. So they were both seven and one. Dennis's only loss was that first game I described. My no idea over his map. <clears throat> Kevin was a top six and two. Um, I was also six and two. Kessling went six and two. Hayes went six and two. Mr. Matt Lutz, CRG went six and two. And uh, Kyle Kruger was the top five and three player. And then right on the bubble was Justin Desai. Um, and then after him, uh, Sperling and Call Call Aldred were also five and three. And I'm not sure who else, how else, how far down the five and threes went. Um, so. Uh, we were quite happy as a team because uh, Team 5 had me, Hayes, and Kyle in the top eight. And also Cal went 5-3 and three and had an awesome showing as well. He was right in the mix um, till the end to, to make day, day two as well. Um, so all four of us uh, showed up and played really well. And <clears throat> so we were happy with our, our team performance. Um, team New Allies had a bunch of people in. They had we had three team five had three people in me Hayes and Kyle. They had four people in uh, CRG Kessling Dennis and Charlie. Um, so there was four new allies, three team five, and then Rogue, Lone Gun, uh, Kevin Shannon, and uh, it was going to be a randomized top four versus bottom four. So I knew I was going to be playing either Kessling Hayes Matt Lutz or Kyle. Um, and I was hoping not Hayes or Kyle. So um, trying to figure out decks, again, I didn't have a ton I liked. Um, what I decided to do was stick with no idea. Um, I did change it. Uh, I cut out the two free ride combos because I figured nobody's going to run. This deal is getting worse all the time. Um, and I added in a double agent because I expected more I expected ISB. I expected, uh, you know, Kevin had ISB. Kessling had ISB. I could see Charlie play in ISB. So I was like, people like ISB. So I added in a double agent and I added in a second Lieutenant Blount because I was like, and of course I ha I do have a uh, Antilles maneuver to grab him. But um, I was like, I want to find Blount early. If I'm playing ISB, like I can just take horse on. I can put him there. I can, uh, I can just keep him flipped and then I win the game. So, um, I added in that they're tracking us. Um, also, I don't remember what, it, there's some other change too. Um, I intended to change Leia's transport to gold leader and gold one, um, but I uh, deck list aired that. I, I forgot to make the actual change on here. Um, so I went with my submitted deck list, which was this. Um, and yeah, so no idea. And, and the major changes were double agent, second blount. Um, and I cut the free ride combos, and I cut one other card for whatever I just said. Some some other card. They're tracking us um, in case Map had some of those tricks that it cancels. So that was what I went with for light, um, and for dark, I went with Tigawat. Um, just like I was going through the process of no one's gonna play Tigawat, so I'm cutting my free ride combos. I figured everyone else was going through that same process and cutting all their free ride combos, so I was like. I'm going to do Ticket of Watt. Like, everyone's cutting their shit for that. So um, so I went with that. I did up to a third occupation in case they do did have free ride combos. And I do have a something special in case they had a skate pod combo to loop and free ride combos. So I could grab free ride and grab a skate pod and still play more occupations. But I'm like, I'm just going to play through. Just like, essentially the reasoning um, is diplo plays three celebrations to get through their cancelers so like why not just play three occupations to get through their cancelers so i did have that too um but i also was figuring where people were cutting for it and not preparing for this deck so um this is a 
Paul Myers creation and along with Dylan, they've been running it a lot and doing really well with it. So props to them for designing it. Um, I know their version's several cards off, but um, this is a tweaked uh, version to um, play. Uh, I added in uh, some changes from if you uh, Cal was playing it the day before and um, I ch made a couple changes like I added in a Decree V because I thought I might play Matt Lutz's Prophet. Um, I didn't know what he was for Dark. It was apparently um, uh, Shadow Collective. Um, I didn't, I didn't, the night before we were like, who was playing what? And we were all just so foggy. We couldn't even remember. I didn't know. I knew Kessling was on ISB, but I, um, I didn't know what his light side was like I, and it wasn't worth the effort of like asking around. So I was like, I'm just going to play some solid decks. I'm going to add in a little bit of tweaks for potential expected opponents, like, like the double blounts. But that was more like, I think there's like at least three people in the field who could play ISB and let's see what did it end up being. I think just two Kessling. Oh, no, just the one, because Kyle switched. So there was only the one ISB. But I thought Kevin, Kessling, and uh, Charlie might all play ISB. So so I added in, in that blount. Um, so here I added in a decree, and I added in an image, and one other card. I don't remember. So, um, all right. So uh, that's what I went with for my decks for... For day two, um, game one, I was playing against Matt Lutz, and um, I opted to start as Dark Side, and he was Prophet. And the Prophet he was playing is his um, Peaceful Prophet, I think is what he has named it. Um, the idea is um, you don't want to battle. I guess that's where the Peaceful comes from. Um, and you just want to do a bunch of pings. So what he does is he sets up the um, audience chamber with uh, R2 with a landing claw or with a fire extinguisher so he can cancel a battle and he puts like Yox get there so he can just take it back to hand and he puts like uh, Caldera Rigum there so he <clears throat> so he, you can't have too much ability to um, to uh, fight him and then he puts a Padme with it so that you can't blank the Caldera with vader and then he puts like um and then he he gets a bb8 there and like a rose and a general leia and um a good blaster and he just does a bunch of pings and damage and he uses a lore senteca to move someone over and ping more like the idea is if you have leo with blaster at the stacked with everyone at the audience chamber and then you lore senteca move her over one site then you can do an extra profit ping and an extra blaster ping and um so he, uh, let's see, how did this game go? Um, I set up a bunch of um, walkers all over, and, and I do occupation, and uh, he plays a free ride combo, and I grab it and um, play a second occupation. And then I'm holding a third in hand all game, and he, he was lamenting a little bit about cutting his second uh, celebration canceler, but had he played it, it would have it would have been, it was already grabbed, and it, I would have just deployed my third. Though it would have saved him like three-fourths, it would have saved him a turn. Um, but he uh, at one he, he sets up all his um, stuff at his audience chamber. He's got the Caldera and the um, R2 with the fire extinguisher and a gifted 3PO and uh, Padme and all that bunch of stuff there. And um, I'm, I'm draining and doing some uh, like six damage, eight damage a turn. Um, and the turn he sets that up, he's just the one location. And so he's, he's got like four in his lost pile. Um, and I play coward so that he can't flip and retrieve and so then he has to go to a second location so then I'm able to get like eight more damage on top of that um, and then he flips and retrieves five <coughs> but then he consolidates back to the audience chamber and he uh, top decks a um, he top decks a Wisa which I had verified or not Wisa but a we're doomed non combo which I had verified in there um, and was planning on grabbing, but then he uses Walkling to retrieve, but he was only at, he had consolidated back to one location. So Coward canceled that retrieval. Um, and so then later he, um, 
So he's doing. I'm. I'm like occupying for three. Cheer new dream for two, and drain two at the downtown plaza, and like one and one at, um, at the other sites, and like he's doing a BB-8 ping. He's doing a good blaster ping. He's doing a profit ping, and he's like draining for one. I think I got a. I, I got an image of a dark lord there, but then he, later he gets a saber, Anakin saber there to make it a draino one, and so he's like doing four or so, and I'm doing like eight or something like that but i put a lot more cards on table um and he had the one time five five card retrieval um i go to his farm and he projections it and i don't have a trooper there yet so it's not draining it at all um but uh anyway we're we're both trading damage um at one point he plays and it could be worse for three and i'm a little worried there might still be a non-combo we're doomed in there like that he might have a non or i mean a combo one that he might have top deck the non combo, but he might also have a combo one in there to loop with three PO, um, to shut off my occupation damage. And free rides already grabbed, and my second grabber, which I'd started, I opted to start something special over um, air attack because I knew with three PO he was going to be looping abusive stuff. He was going to be looping it could be worse and all this stuff. So I started the second grabber, um, and so we played and it could be worse. And I thought about grabbing it, and then I didn't because I was still worried about a non combo we're doomed. And so then I, I get like a, another verify or two and decide, no, I'll just grab it next time. But he, he tracks the, it could be worse through his deck. But then when I do and him planning to top deck to then three PO it into hand, but I do damage and then he top decks and he top decks it. Um, he just mistracked it. He was, he, he was off by one. Um, so that was really big. I think I ended up grabbing something random. I don't remember, or maybe I never even used my second grabber. I don't know, um, but he ended up top decking the it could be worse that he was tracking around, which was a you know obviously a big mistake. Um, and he does at one point use solo to play the non combo we're doomed once and place it out of play. But um, anyway, it's mostly a damage mitigation, and I'm just doing way more damage. He eventually does get out Obi and Radiant Seven and uh, a landing claw, so that shuts down two damage um, with the from the Tyranu drain and lets him drain free. And um, he does eventually um, spread to two sites. Or no, he, he just lures and teching um, a little bit sometimes. But but I have Decree V out to to make sure the profit ping is only one. So he's, he's not bothering <coughs> not bothering to go to an extra site yet. Um, but anyway, I'm just doing a ton of damage and he, it's just a damage mitigation thing for him. And um, like he does a yox get where he pays three to take back a weapon so that he can get a pseudo retrieval in um but anyway i eventually win by 16. um the the way i would describe this in a short version is um like he played his game i played mine but he went very conservative and i didn't i went pretty aggressive so um i like like i could have been worried about oh what if leia comes down with their blaster and shoots my walker and and this is bad and blah 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 and instead i was just like yolo walker guy 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 like come at me and um and he didn't he went over and played his game and so then that meant my damage like really added up um and uh and so i won by 16. so the next game um i was my my no idea versus his Shadow Collective. And I knew this would be a tough game, but I didn't think No Idea could lose by 16 because I can just like grind him out. I can just pile real hard, do Stardust damage, drain some, and just like eat his pings and just grind him down. Um, so I um, I think like turn one, he gets out Maul and moves him over the light, Lightmaker site. And my turn one, like, I think I just draw some. Um, and then like his turn two, he moves Maul over to the defensive perimeter after getting out another site. And like my turn two, I go like Bright Hope, Admiral's Order, pull Blue 11, pull a dude with Blue 11, drop a dude into the Data Vault to take the plans, play another dude to the beach, move out with the plans, I'm flipped. And so I'm like stacked at the beach, with blue 11 and like a bunch of guys and I'm all set up to drain for four and or to drain for three and pink for one and like looking great. I got like a Luke in my hand. Um, 
And then he deploys Zuckus and Mist Hunter. And Forlom. And then he throws like Johto on board for just like fodder or whatever. I don't know. Um, and I'm like, crap. So like my my guess was he has no space in this. So I'm just going to throw it on my Bright Hope, which is power one, uh, four foot five, and actually power zero with the Abomos order. So I'm just going to throw it on a naked Bright Hope. And I was going to reinforce it like the next turn, but I was like, it's he, he probably has no space in here. And if he does, it's probably not in hand. Well, in his opening hand was his one Zuckus in Mist Hunter and his Forlom. So he comes down, he just wrecks Bright Hope. I don't have a Hujix, I peel like five or six. And now I'm in a bad position because um, I'm having to pay to drain all game and his is draining free. So um, that's real bad. Besides, you know, peeling a bunch of cards. So, um, but I know I just want to get get damage in. So I, um, I get Luke on the blue 11 and I split over to the vault so that I have two battlegrounds and I can retrieve with Luke. I paid a drain at the beach and I start us pink that turn the next turn obviously. Well, he reinforces with IG and he drops uh I think the turn he drops Zuckus too. He he played um Hodo hold holder uh the hold, whatever the one that pulls Aura Sing is. Um He, he's a ho. What is his name? Uh, the, the, okay, you know what? Let's look up Aura and let's uh, let's search game text for Aura. This guy, Hondo. There we go. He he plays Hondo and a gun over to his like Lightmaker site and um and so that lets him flip because he controls two battlegrounds with gangsters and so he flips and. He's getting ping. He's flipping every turn and getting a ping from that. And he's draining, uh, like, one at the defensive perimeter because I get a, a projection there. And he's draining one at the system, and he's draining one with uh, Hondo. And he is um, pinging two with a blaster effect. So he's doing one, two, three, four, five. He's doing, like, five for free. Oh, and one with the obje objective. So he's doing six for free, and I'm paying three to drain one. And paying three to drain two and pinging one. So I'm doing four, but it cost me six, and he's doing six for free. Plus he got the overflow early, so it's just rough. I do get an Ezra down over to his mall site, and she stays alive for like a turn or two and gets gets like two to four damage in. Um, and then he just kills her with like a Jabba. Um, and so now we're getting low, but I am just consistently getting damage in. Uh, and... Um, I deploy uh, Leia Organa in front of his mall at the defensive perimeter. So that saves me two force the turn I deploy her. And I don't, I don't figure she's going to get overflowed. I have a Hujix in hand um, in, just in case. And in case he has like a Wounded Warrior or whatever. Um, of course, that she gets one if not able to otherwise. So she'd still get a Destiny. Um, but uh, I deploy Leia in front and he... Um, And so she blocks the blaster ping for the turn. Yeah, that's it. Hondo. Thank you. Hondo Onaka. Um, he, so she blocks the blaster ping for the turn and the drain of one for a turn. So she blocks two. And so he battles with Maul. And uh, he opts not to fire because I can just cancel it with my objective. And so he, oh, and she blocks him from flipping that turn because now he doesn't control two sites with gangsters. So she saves three damage there. Um, he battles, he draws a one of a Dryden Voss, and he doesn't have a, a Sith Fury V in hand. So he draws a one and adds one with Maul. So it's only a two, and Leia is a, has diplomatic immunity less than three. So Leia's immune, and I draw a five. Um, and Antilles Maneuver, which he subtracts one with Maul, makes it a four. So Leia's power seven to Maul's power six. So he actually is going to have to peel. So he sends the gun used and um, and then ends his turn. So then my turn, I like pay to drain, th drain two at the beach, pay to drain one at the vault, and um, I start us ping, and I deploy an extra fodder guy with Leia. 
so now he um he does his like drain ping etc he uh drops a um why didn't he play a gun i don't remember why he doesn't play a gun maybe he's getting low in life force and he didn't want to pull the gun back um but he drops uh Balatic in front of the beach because he started the Gik effect and he also pulled a Gik real early with Masterful Combo. So he has he has a Gik in hand and the Gik effect. So he's he drops Balatic to the beach for a turn. Um, so I um, oh you know what I did actually is um, when I dropped the fodder with Leia, I had my five still tracked and so I battled them all and. Um, it was a scrub who was like a power two scrub, but I drew my five that Maul made it a four. And so I was like power nine or 10 and he drew low again. And so he had to peel like three. I was like, my only out is like, maybe I can kill this Maul or maybe I can make him peel. So he he had to peel like two or three to keep Maul alive and I lost my scrub. And so now Leia, who had already blocked the three damage, um, again, blocked a drain of one and of course had had she died in that first battle, the gun would have been out. So now she's blocked four damage. Um, and then he, uh, and when I battled, Balotic must have been there the turn before, because when I battled, after I battled with the scrub, I battled Balotic with like no destiny left in my deck and just massively overpowered and he used the, the gig effect on it. Um, and, and so then Maul battles Leia and kills her this time, but, uh, and then gets to flip because it's still in his battle flip phase and ping one. Um, but now he's down to exactly 16 cards and I had just won by 16, um, the first game. And so, and I'm down to two after all his pings, um, after his objective pings me from three, I'm at zero in hand, two in life force. I can't even pay to drain. Um, but I do one stardust ping that knocks him from 16 to 15. And, um, and so I advance in the match by, by one. It was a very close game that that the the you know zuckus and forlom blowing out i i think i would like no idea as a matchup um if they had no space or if i just played more cautiously um i think shadow collective would be an okay match um because if i just pile in space with like han Chewie falcon and and this is only ship and i have han Chewie falcon and like any capital and like a guy on it it's it's hard for him to come down um and then if Luke's retrieving and I'm draining at the beach, I can I can easily match or out damage. I, I think um, he also at one point topped top decked his other first one of his first light sights, his second battleground one. And so if he could have spread out there with an extra gun, he would have been getting more damage in. So that was pretty bad. Um, but yeah, it it it, it I, I almost conceded the match too at one point mid game when he had like twenty four in life force and six in hand and i was just like had already peeled a bunch and he was draining free and i wasn't and i was just like i almost just like was like there's no way i can come back from this but i just kept grinding i paid three to drain one at the vault probably like four times because i was just like i just need to keep getting damage through um i got a little bit through with ezra i got a little bit of uh, one he lost one to the battle where he battled leia and i outpowered and like two or three to my next battle when i battled into him with leia and a scrub and then, you know, just eking out one Stardust ping, one Stardust ping, like, um, was able to get him down to both of us having 16, and the Stardust ping knocked him to 15, um, and one by one. So it was it was a great match. He played really well, um, and uh, I was I was just able to squeak by. Um, so my next games uh, were. Uh, so I made the top four. My next games were against Kessling. Those were streamed. Um, so you can go watch the, the commentary and stream on the PC's YouTube channel. Um, but I'll go through it from my perspective. Um, uh, Kessling, I asked him mid-round. Once we knew we were matched up, I was like, hey, what are you playing? And he said he's doing ISB Old Allies. And I said, all right, cool. Um, I'm doing Ticket to Watt, no idea. And so I thought about what side do I want to start? And um, I thought no idea was advantage over the ISB because like we've talked about the um, the double blount and the Menace Fades. Of course, Menace Fades is kind of irrelevant if they're not flipped, but it could still help against Chirinu. And, um, and, you know, the double blount, and I thought 
no idea is kind of advantage, so maybe I'll start with that. And um, and the Tigidawat, I thought old allies was advantage because they can just reduce your occupation damage, and then you're doing like four, and they're doing more than that. Like you're if you, if you stay at Bespin, you're maybe doing four or five, but they're like draining for they're draining two at their two two. They're draining two at the system. They're pinging one with BB-8. They're maybe draining at the other site. So two, four, five, six, and maybe they're Rose retrieving. And you're draining like two with Chirinu, two at the downtown plaza, and one and one, and maybe one on occupation. So you're doing similar. Um, they maybe are doing one more than you net, but you've also probably deployed more. So like it's, it's pretty tough um, in theory. And so... Um, I thought I'm gonna start the no idea versus the ISB, and then Phil was like, "Call me," and he's like, "Start the start the deal." He was like, "Start with that one. Um, I think you can play that well, like the first game, and then just grind no idea ISB like and not make mistakes." Um, so I was like, "All right, I'm I'm gonna go with go with Phil." So that's that's what I did. I started with Dark Side. Um, he was old allies. I set up my free executor. I set up some walkers or whatever. He he set up the Falcon at his system. Um, then his second turn, he um, he checked for a site, and um, he'd activated it. And little did I know, he had activated. He had a bunch of sites, so he had the um, the normal starting. He ha and then he had the graveyard. But he also then had oh yeah the Ravager crash site instead of instead of um, Lor Santeca site he maybe he was putting on map he didn't want to get choked by map no he would cover up the map one so I don't know why he did the Ravager crash site over the tunnel village but anyway um, on his second turn he activated both the graveyard and the crash site so he wasn't going to be able to come down and flip and I was already at two locations because um, I think my first turn was like executor and Piet to the docking bay and use Piet to pull Tempest Scout 3 to the 2-2 downtown plaza and put Ozzel on board there for free. So then my second turn was like drain 2 and 1, guy over to another site to uh, start occupation damage, guy, guy to um, the, the upper walkway, it's like Mark Steele, to the upper walkway, and then play occupation, put Piet... Uh, transfer Piet over and move Mark Steel over free. So then I'm I'm set up right now to do a bunch of damage. So he activates both his sites. Hey Robo, how's it going? Good to see you. I'm 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 doing a tournament report for like a card game. It's a Star Wars CCG card game that I play. I just we just had an in-person tournament this past weekend. So I'm talking through right now. I'm almost done though. By all, that's relative. I probably still have at least a half hour to go. But I'm talking about my uh, semifinal games. Um, so he, his turn two, he activates both of his battleground sites. So he's not going to be able to flip. So he goes to alternate plan time and he deploys like a core, a Tantive and Radis and moves them plus the Falcon in front of my executor. And the executor has no pilots at this point. Like I wasn't worried about him attacking it with, you know, with whatever ships he had that were not the Falcon. So the executor was just like alone. So, um, <clears throat> he moves all them in front of the executor. So my turn, I occupy for two, drain two, and drain one. So now I'm already, I've done like eight damage over the past two turns. Um, and he hasn't done any, so I'm like, I'm pretty happy with that. And so I have both my ships in my hand. Um, and so, uh, let me pull up that list. Did we look at that list? Or, oh yeah, we did. Um, so I have both my ships in my hand. So I drop Jendon and Onyx 1 and Onyx 2 in, uh, at Bespin. And um, and I also, I just, I, I do my 5 damage. I drop those two ships. I think I also maybe play a pilot on board. And then I deploy someone to the upper walkways. So now I'm at all three. And then, oh, and I, what, I, no, I deploy someone over to the upper walkway, but then I shuttle up Mark Steel. So now I have Piet at a site, um, Ozzel and Tempest Scout 3 at the middle site and uh, just a random whatever at um, I think it was like a trooper um, eye rollers whatever um, at the at the upper walkway 
So I'm at all three of my sites, and and then I have Executor with Mark Steel and my two ships. Well, he can't battle into the ships because I get two Destiny. I'm like power 20 and two Destiny, and he's power like 15 and two Destiny. Um, but my ships bounce to hand, so I can easily like or once per turn. But Jendon can forfeit for six into hand um, from Bespin because of the free Executor effect. So battling into me is not very good. So he. Um, he deploys some guys to Jakku. He deploys like Leia to it. He deploys Leia's resistance transport and pulls Leia and lands and then deploys Ray at a site. He like lands Leia and then he moves over the Tantive to the system to flip, consolidates R Rose with Leia and then moves and lands the Falcon and flips it in front of my 2 2. So now he's blocked my 2 2 drain. Um, and he's flipped, so he caps occupation. Um, but I still, I do an occupation for one. I drain one at the system. I drain one at the docking bay and one at the other one. So I still do four damage this turn. And um, I don't really want to battle his Falcon because it's got Poe on it and it's going to draw a bunch of Destinies and stuff. So I just, um, I deploy like Veers in Walker in front of... Um, in front of like Ray. Oh, and he also put Rose there. Um, not Ray. Leia, Rose, BB-8. Um, he had BB-8. And so I battle with Veers and I draw pretty good um, and outpower him. And so, uh, oh, and I use um, Sand Effect so he can't minus two my destiny or, um, or add with leadership or anything like that. Um, so I sand effect and I draw pretty decently with Veers, so I like outpower him by nine. So he loses Leia's res resistance transport and BB-8, which I capture with Veers, um, and um, and then I move my Falcon in front of him at at Jakku system, and then I move my ATST away. So he drains two with the Falcon at the site I've given him, but I'm just doing way more damage because I'm getting occupation in and whatever. He he um. He runs with Leia. I think he runs with Leia and Rose and and moves the other ship up to... Um... Oh, he had played Chewie first. Also, before he landed the Falcon, he, he deployed Chewie in front of my um, walker, and I tried to trample it, and I drew a two and missed, and he grabbed it. Um, so Chewie was also there. He was a big threat. Um, but he, he moves the Tanif 4 over in front of my ships, and he, I think he played a generic Corvette too, and maybe... It, pilot or shuttled shuttled someone up or something but he was he moved them in front of my two ties <coughs> and um so my turn uh he pulls resistance or ultimatum um because bb8 being captured as one to that train so but i drained two at the um at the at his jaku land, landing site i drained two at the jaku system i do two occupation um, and he can't cap any of this because he's not controlling two jaku locations and i drain one at the docking bay and one at the um, upper walkway. So I'm just doing tons of damage and he's not doing that much. Like this is all kind of gone off script for him, um, which made it a fun, interesting game. Um, but then uh, he moves his, I, I just moved the executor back in front. I think I played a Vader in front of him and, and moved the, and then I played like at some point I played Barak and, and another dude. And at, at some point I played like Moff Gideon into his, um, his, raise hut and basically i'm just spreading out and doing a bunch of damage and blocking most of it i'm avoiding his falcon um later he gets a han and ch to go with the chewy and splits them and the falcon on my sights but i'm just getting two occupation damage every turn i'm draining one or two at the system every other turn depending on as he runs from wherever the executor is i drain at raise hut for two i drain over it as like um his 2-0 site Sometimes he's getting a rose retrieval, but sometimes I'm blanking it with Vader. But he's he's getting he's basically his main damage is a drain over at my Cloud City site for two, and I'm doing like six. So um, I'm just but he's he's able to grind it down. Like that's the thing is don't give up because he he ends up finally like um, when the game ends I have thirteen. So he he was able to grind me down to thirteen, but I was just very much in control the entire game. Um, just very strong board control doing more damage i just deployed a lot of cards i had to deploy you know a bunch of pilots and executor and bark and veers and vader and muff gideon and 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 then he was getting in you know drain drain so um i end up winning by 13 so then the next match is my um 
my no idea versus his ISB. And um, this goes mostly according to plan. He gets he gets executor out um, and goes over to Bespin and um, I pilot the vault. I get out Tantive 4 and um, Blount and I put on Beaumont Kin I'll, um, as fodder and for when my when my um, lost pile gets to 10, he will add one to the drain. And um, and I think I get like Lightmaker and Bright Hope there. Um, and then he, and he, meanwhile, he piles at my beach, I think. Um, and so uh, then he comes down with like Vengeance, Callus, Tarkin, and like some other ISB. Oh, Ozzel, because he uses he he uses Vandalay. He deploys Vandalay over onto the Executor um, to bounce Ozzel the hand and play Ozzel down at Coruscant because he has a command he wants to use with Ozzel. So he battles. He's command to add a destiny. So he's drawn three with um, Callus ability command, and then he cancels mine with um, Tarkin. But I can. I still bright hope his. So I'm like, I'm massively outpowered. I have to lose. Oh, I, I use Antilles maneuver to, I can't shake a Van and Willard onto the ship. So he's forfeit six. I think I have to, I think I have to lose like exactly 11 and Lightmakers five and Van and Willard six. So they exactly cover. Um, but he's, I'm still stuck with the Star Destroyer with two destinies and cancels my destiny. I had a Han Chewy Falcon that draws the destiny to power there too, I think. Or no, no, no. So I didn't. So he outpowered me. I lost stuff. So then my turn, I come back. I deploy Han Chewy Falcon. I deploy some kind of forfeit fodder, I think. And then I deploy Ray. Because um, I knew approximately in all that was my sand effect. So I deploy Ray and I used to pull the sand effect. And I dropped that down. And my life force is getting kind of low at this point because he's been executor draining to its Scarif all this time. And, um, but he hasn't been retrieving and I know I'm just trying to get him down below, you know, 13. Um, so, but now because of the sand effect, I come down with Honchu Falcon and with Ray aboard and whatever random pilot, like, um, I'm, I get massive power. I get like 32 power. Um, and he's like power 20 or power. He's power 18 with the Admiral's order subtracting two, I think. Um, and sand effect makes it so he only gets one and can't cancel instead of getting two and a cancel. Um, so I, I outpower him by like 12 so he or 14. So I think he has to lose like Ozzel, Callus, and two or something. or um, and, and he just can't come back from that because I still have the one sand effect. So um, at some point then basically I kill off uh, kill off the the vengeance he goes stalker up to up to scarif and splits ship so he has executor one stalker with a guy at another um and i kill off i put i put leia um organa as a pilot on the falcon i kill off his vengeance and tarkin and they they cover um and then i move the falcon up to block a drain at bespin um and so now he's uh, I never got Luke, so that would have helped a lot. But now he's just, he's doing like two at Scarif and maybe one at my beach. I think I had a projection on the beach. And I'm doing one at the vault and pinging one. And I'm draining two at Coruscant because of Beaumont Kin. <coughs> and um, I'm just damaging him down. And finally he gets down to like nine life force. Um, and I had one by 13 and he had like no hand. And so then I just drew up, I think maybe I, I barely won that game or maybe he barely wins. It, it would have been close to if we played it out, but, um, there was no need at that point. Cause I wanted to rest a little bit before, um, the next game and why grind out diff. So I drew up when he was at nine and, uh, I advanced in the match. Um, and then I waited to see the result of the next one. And, um, in that one, Hayes beat Dennis. Um, and so Hayes advanced, um, so I wanted to play and Hayes was pretty fried, um, for, from Star Wars and he was ready to get some dinner and play some other games and stuff. So Hayes conceded the final to me, um, you know, we're 
longtime friends and teammates, and I had actually just conceded a semifinals game in the retro event to him a couple months ago. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and, and it, like the Dennis Charlie conceded the day before, um, we agreed I had the matchup advantage because his no idea, he did the same thing I did. You know, we built our decks together the, the night before morning of, and he, and he went, okay, I'm cutting my escape pod combos because no one's going to play Tigatawatt except you, and I'm not going to tech against you. So like he had cut his escape pod combos, which obviously is really bad against this deal. Um, and no idea set your course is going to be a, an interesting game, but um, Tigatawatt's enough advantage without no idea having the escape or the free ride combos that, um, so he did still have one escape pod combo, but of course I have a grabber that'll only pause the damage for one turn, but cutting his, his two free ride combos, um, obviously made me quite advantage in the match. So he went ahead and conceded, um, and we went out to get some food and then play a bunch of games. Um, so that was, uh, all of my games that weekend. Um, I think I, I, I don't know if you could tell, but my memory was getting better like the later into the tournament, the more recent the games were. When, whereas like the first game against Dennis, I was like, uh, well, how did that one go? And then like the last games against Kessling, I was like, oh, I remember most turns of that. Um, so it's a long weekend of Star Wars. Um, but it was a blast seeing everyone. Uh, that is my tournament report. Um, thanks, everybody. Big props to the all the volunteers on the pc who make this game happen um it's a lot of fun the people who organized this event and ran it casey tournament director and um jerry and dan for doing the streaming and scott of course does so much getting stuff to work like sending all the streaming equipment and getting the hotel wi-fi calling the hotel and being like get your shit together and um and then all the people on the pc who like uh like schoenthal with the tournament committee or or um Jared uh, doing all the like tweeting and marketing and getting all these deck lists up so that we could actually look at some of these deck lists as I did this and um, the whole D&D team making new sets and working on on making cards for us and the graphics team has been killing it so cool um, so and the gym team coding everything so really appreciate everyone um, it was really fun seeing everybody I'm I already have my flight booked for worlds um, so I'm excited. I'm glad Kevin Shannon is back. He is a really fun guy to hang out with, a really great player. Um, I I had I can't think of a bad experience this whole weekend. I had really classy opponents. I had uh, I, I just had a fun time, and um, the the hotel um, was a little sketch, but but it was just a, a super fun weekend. Um, so thank you for. Uh, for watching this is almost two hours now so way shorter than those other ones uh, uh, but hopefully you guys got some use out of it or, or seeing my thinking on some of the stuff how it went um, and yeah catch you guys at the next event or online